Two days ago, I was scrolling on Reddit, and before you call me a pathetic, obese gooner, I was only on there to see what's trending on r slash maths. And there was one specific post which caught my eye, which was this r slash Desmos graph. Why does this happen when you type x to the y equals y to the x? When I first typed it in, I thought, well, it clearly doesn't, but then I realised that it's only when you zoom in to six decimal places that you can see this horrible mess. And when you move the viewport around, you also get these weird shapes following you. Well, first of all, if it wasn't already obvious, this is not because of the equation itself. The equation contains some values where x equals y and also some values like, for example, 2, 4 or 4, 2 because they equal the same thing. This graph is correct, but when you zoom in on really small values, Desmos just can't handle it. This happens because Desmos uses JavaScript, which uses 64 bits to store numbers. When a number is stored in bits, it means that the number system used is binary, which is when the number is represented as a bunch of ones and zeros rather than the digits zero through nine. And when you convert from binary numbers back into base 10 numbers, you end up with this tiny, tiny error because the values in binary of the digits are not the same as the value of the digits in base 10. So this value mismatch creates a slight error. This is called a floating point rounding error. And it's well known in computer science and it's the reason why the point EE isn't filled in even though it should be, whereas the points that are sort of around it but not really the same are actually being filled in when they really shouldn't be. But what about that weird shape that seems to follow you around when you move the graph? That's not just floating point rounding error, this is Bernard. The Desmos algorithm is a quad tree based marching squares algorithm, which means it divides the screen into four equal quadrants. Then if it follows the rules, it will divide each of those quadrants down into another four quadrants, dividing down again and again until the limit, which is about 10 by 10 pixels. Here are the main rules for whether a quadrant should be descended or divided into four pieces. First, descend down to a depth of five so that there are at least 1,024 uniformly sized quadrants. Don't descend if the quadrant is too small, for example, if it's only about 10 by 10 pixels. Don't descend if the function f is not defined at all four vertices of the quadrant. Don't descend if the gradients and function values indicate that f is approximately locally linear within that quadrant or if the quadrant suggests that the function doesn't pass through f of x equals zero. Basically, if there's less information to plot, it will plot it at a lower precision and otherwise descend. The algorithm stops if the total number of quadrants exceeds two to the power 14, which is 16,384. Because of point three, the quadrants on the edge of the screen, which is 124 of them, don't get descended. So there are 900 left to descend into. So the number of remaining quadrants allowed is 16,384 minus 100 124, which is 16,260. And all of those remaining quadrants can divide two more times each, which gives 900 times four to the power two, which is 900 times 16, which is 14,400. So now the number of quadrants allowed is 16,260 minus 14,400, which leaves only 1,860 left. And since when you descend a quadrant down, you're basically just splitting it from one quadrant into four quadrants, you're adding three new quadrants each time, and there are 1,860 new quadrants to make. Divide that by three is 620 new subdivisions to make. But there are still 14,400 quadrants in the middle to subdivide and there are only 620 possible subdivisions that you can make. So out of that, you can only subdivide 620 further down. You basically end up with a high definition view in only 620 of those quadrants, and the rest of it is a low definition view. It mainly happens on graphs with a lot of information, which is why you see Bernard on graphs like GCD XY equals one, or even tan 35.6 X equals zero. When you zoom out, Desmos starts to reduce the amount of information being shown to you because of how many quadrants are being descended into and then you end up with these wobbly lines and eventually you end up with Bernard. Desmos is saying I can only show you these few quadrants now because I've essentially run out of room for the rest of the screen. So now you know why x to the y equals y to the x gives you something funny on Desmos and before you leave in the comment section oh you pronounced Bernard wrong it's Bernard. Shut up you Americans I'm British okay it's Bernard.